In this video I will present how to build a 200mm focal lens autocom setup out of Torlap's parts element with a camera and a reticle placed at infinity. Autocollimeters are designed to project and record image at infinity, which make them pretty useful to align optical setups. But they can also be used to measure very small angle deviation, measuring straightness or accuracy of optical elements such as prism, or even aligning industrial equipment such as mills and lids. But let's first start with some theory on autocollimeters. In the second part of the video, I will show to build a self-referencing autocollimeter setup from Torlap's part element. Ok, so this is our autocollimeter setup. It is made from a LED light source, a diffuser screen, a reticle target, a 50% cube beam splitter, a camera, and a collimating lens. Because the reticle target is placed at the back focal position of the collimating lens, it allows projecting an image of the reticle at infinity. In a similar way, light coming from infinity is imaged on the camera. Therefore, if we place a mirror in front of the autocollimator, the light projected by the reticle at infinity will be reflected back into the setup and re-image on the camera. And if the mirror is then slightly tilted, we can see the image of the reticle on the camera that will be shifted on the side. Before we move on to the aligning procedure, let's cover some applications of the autocollimator. One of the applications is to align telescope and 4F systems. Imagine you have a beam expander that you would like to align. All you have to do is to place your autocollimator on one side and a mirror on the other side. Once your system will be aligned, the image of the reticle projected at infinity by the autocollimator will be reflected back by the mirror and re image sharp on the camera. A second application is to use autocollimator to measure focal lengths. All you have to do is to place a mirror behind your lens. Once your mirror will be at the exact back focal lens position, you will have a cat size retroreflector configuration and the image of the reticle projected by the autocollimator will be re-imaged sharply on the camera. In the beginning of the video, I said that autocollimator could be used to measure the accuracy of optical elements. Let's illustrate that by measuring the wedge of a window. If we send light to the wedge, a large part of it will be transmitted. But a small part of it will also be reflected back to the autocollimator. Each airglass interface will then produce a re-image of the reticle on the camera. And each image will be shifted on the side depending on its reflection angle. The angle of the wedge and the angle between the two reflections are linked through the following formula, where n is the refraction index of the optical window. Finally, autocollimators can be used to measure the straightness of the table or the wobble of translation stage. Let's illustrate that. Imagine you have an imperfect table and a mobile mirror moving on it. As you move the mirror on the table, it will be tilted due to the local slopes. This will then change the angle of the light reflected to the autocollimator. Again, this angle change will be represented by a shift of the reticle on the camera. Typical angular sensitivities of the autocollimator is on the order of 1000th of a degree. Autocollimators require the camera and the reticle to be placed at the exact back focal position of the lens. We will now see how to align the setup with great precision. To align the setup, I've placed the camera on the other side of the cube beam splitter with a beacon convex lens and an iris. The role of the iris is simply to limit the spherical aberration of the lens and to increase the image quality. Light will still exit the setup through the collimating lens, but a part of it will also be reflected and pass through the beacon convex lens and reach the camera where we will have a direct image of the reticle target. If we now place a mirror in front of the autocollimator with an extremely small tilt, the light will be reflected to the reticle target, and if the collimating lens is at a good position, both the reticle target and its image will coincide on the same plane. 
But because the target that I've selected is 99% reflective chrome coating, light will be reflected back and re-image on the camera where we could see two images this time of the reticule. One is the direct image and one is the image reflected back by the setup. The idea is then to move the position of the collimating lens until both images are perfectly in focus. This allows to have a self-reference of infinity. With some attention, you can typically achieve 0.1% accuracy with this alignment configuration. Now that we have the theory working, let's see how to assemble the autocollimator. Here is a list of all the items required to build the autocollimator. Ok, so we'll first start with the backlight. Take your mounted ground glass diffuser 1 inch 220 grits, add a negative crossline test target on top of that and secure it with a retainer ring. Add a 1 inch extension tube and connect this to your power LED. Here I've chosen a M625 L3 from Torlas. Put your backlight on the side and take your beam splitter. Connect 2 inch rod to your beam splitter paying attention to its orientation. You may now add your backlight to your cube beam splitter using a cage system. Leave about 1.5 inch between your cube beam splitter and your reticle target. If you put the reticle target too close to the cube beam splitter, you won't be able to have a good focus with your camera afterwards. Add 6 inch rods to your cube in splitter such that you have a direct view to your reticle target. If you are not sure which way to put the rod, just follow the arrow draw on the case of your cube in splitter. Put your assembly on the side the time that we make the imaging lens system. Take a threaded cage plate and add an iris. Then add a 50mm focal lens, be convex lens and secure it with a retainer ring. Finally, set the iris to a few millimeter diameter such as to reduce the spherical aberration and to increase the image quality. Add your imaging lens system to your assembly. Its position is not mandatory at the moment because we will fine tune it later. Now connect your camera to a cage plate using an adapter ring. The camera that I'm using is a DCC 1545M monochrome camera from Torlabs. I will not advise using a color camera for the autocollimator setup, so be sure that your camera is a monochrome one. You may now secure your camera at the end of your cage system assembly. Connect your camera to your computer and start your image acquisition software. We will now fine tune the imaging lens system such as to produce a sharp image of the reticle on the camera sensor. Do not hesitate to zoom in to find the best focus position. Once you have found your best focus position, tighten your imaging lens system cage plate. We will now add the output lens of our autocollimator setup. However, because the lens is 2 inch diameter and we are using a 1 inch cage system, we need a 1 inch to 2 inch cage system adapter plate. Because the output lens should be placed at about 7 inch from the cube beam splitter, I have used 6 inch rods on the long side and 1 inch rods on the short side close to the beam splitter. The output lens that I am using for the autocollimator setup is a 200mm focal lens doublet achromat. Even if you are using almost monochromatic light in this setup, this helps reducing the spherical aberration. Sharper image will help you resolve smaller angles. Place some temporary extension rods such that we can place the retro reflecting mirror. If you do not have a kinematic base for your mirror, you can just use some tape like me. Now put your mirror on the assembly and secure it tightly. We'll now fine tune the position of the output lens.
when the lens will be at the correct position. Both the reticle and its image will be on the same plane. Because most of the reticle surface will act as a mirror, you should be able to see two cross on the camera image. Once again, do not hesitate to zoom in to adjust the focus position. Please note that due to the beam splitter, the image of the reflection will be dimmer. Once at the proper position, secure the output lens gauge plate. You may now remove the camera and the imaging lens system. Connect your camera to the other end of the beam splitter using half an inch rods. Connect your camera back to the computer and fine tune its position. Because we have placed the camera on the other side of the beam splitter, we only see one image of the reticle. The dimmer reticle that you can see on the video is actually the reflection inside the beam splitter cube. This is what we call a ghost. You may now secure the camera and remove the alignment mirror. Your autocollimator setup is now ready to be used. Please visit our website for more engineering projects and videos.